Doki Doki Literature Club. This game has many fans who tend to disagree on many different aspects, such as Monica being evil, the protagonist being a terrible person, and so on. Now, there is one thing that people disagree on that has really piqued my interest recently. DDLC Canon. Now, I know what you're thinking. Canon? How is that even a thing to disagree with? Well, most people like to say the good ending of the game is canon, considering you complete each route, delete Monica, and then Sayori thanks you and says goodbye. But not everyone agrees. Some people think the bad ending is canon. Some people think the side stories are canon. And so much more. But what if I told you there might be more to the canon than everyone thinks? Check this out. In DDLC and DDLC Plus, you must reset the game in order to play it again. In DDLC, you do this by deleting the first run file, and in DDLC Plus, you simply run the reset file found on the in-game desktop. Now, let's take a closer look at what happens when we reset the game in DDLC Plus. Did you see it? Let's take a closer look. While the reset runs, you'll see the Restoring Entities command run, and four entities will be restored. These four entities are Monica, Yuri, Sayori, and Natsuki. You can even tell which is Monica due to the monitor kernel access being by her entity ID. Now, why is this important? Each entity ID is designated to a specific doki, and their access to the script is also tied to their ID. Now, what happens if you reset the game again? Did you notice anything different? The four entity IDs are different. What does this mean, you may ask? Well, what if I told you that this has the potential to break apart what is considered canon completely? What if I told you that every time you reset DDLC, the characters are ripped apart and rebuilt, creating entirely new versions of themselves? It would make sense, as Monica should remember everything you have done up to this point. She does have that ability. I mean, even Sayori remembered everything you did once she was given access to the script and she was deleted from the game. Now we can chalk up Sayori forgetting due to her access being removed. But why didn't Monica remember? She didn't remember because it isn't the same Monica. It's a brand new version of Monica. We already know that multiple versions of Monica can exist. We learn about this in DDLC Plus due to the multiple VNs being monitored. We even see a variant of Monica in the DDLC Plus side stories. Now, Dan Salvato did say that the side stories were set outside of the original timeline, making them present in an alternate one. But what does this have to do with the DDLC canon? Well, each time you reset the game, new versions of Doki's are created, making the game slightly different than the previous one which can also mean that every person who plays this game plays a slightly different version than everyone else, which in turn means that either the first game ever played is the true canon, there is no true canon to the game, or it's all canon. Yes, it's all canon and just taking place on alternate timelines, where in one timeline, you take the four Dokis to the perfect ending. In another timeline, you take them to the bad ending where you only focus on one specific Doki. In fact, it makes every little event, every little variation in the game, canon. This actually opens up the canon a lot more if you really think about it. We already mentioned the side stories, which can now technically be considered canon due to the multiple timelines. It also means that the various mods can be considered canon as well. 
If each game has different dokis, that means if you create a mod using them, you're creating a timeline where those four entity IDs are being used in a mod. And because those four IDs come from the original game, then that mod would be canon. In fact, technically, this makes the various original characters that are in the mods canon as well because they interact with the original dokis and their original entity IDs. This is both very interesting and honestly terrifying because I've seen and heard about some of the mods y'all have made and good lord. Now this theory also comes with a lot of questions. What are the original entity IDs for the Dokis? Is the Monica who wrote the Steam page and owns the Twitter account the original Monica? If so, is she still around or was she deleted and restored into a brand new entity as well? The Twitter page has been quiet for quite a long time now. So tell me, what do you think about this theory? Do you have anything that can counter it? Do you have any additional proof? Let me know your thoughts on this theory in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video and be sure to subscribe for more DDLC content and horror content in general. I'll see you in the next one.